Welcome to the state television company Western Armenia. Today's broadcast. Victims of Western Armenia. Baku authorities made accusations against Yerevan, evacuation from different settlements of Thori and Tavush regions. Events dedicated to the memory of victims of Greek genocide. Years of 451, 1920, and 2020 in Armenia. Baku's letter to UNESCO. Samvel Kentikian was born in 1867 in Arabkir, Western Armenia, Harbert province. After studying at the Central Turkish College in Ayantap, he returned to his birthplace and worked as a teacher for a year. He served as a preacher in Rodostoy in 1915, and he was a teacher at the Zmyurnia American College. He had a son and four daughters. Later exiled and died in Konya prison. He was one of the uh, victims of the genocide committed against Armenians. Local authorities, in order to turn things upside down in their typical style, made new accusations against Eastern Armenia. Thus, on May 29, the State Border Service of Baku organized a tour for the press representatives with extraordinary haste. Less than a few hours after the start of the tour, the Baku media already reported about Armenian vandalism. We saw with our own eyes the vandalism carried out by the Armenians and the destroyed houses in the village, report in Azerbaijan journalists. Let's remind that during the Soviet years, Azerbaijanis lived in the territory of Armenian SSSR, and we are talking about the houses in the border zone, which were destroyed by Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan is in the 19th. Having unleashed aggression, Azerbaijan now accuses Armenia of its own crimes. On May 29, rescue operations rescued 75 rescuers and more than 14 combat units and three operative groups from the Ministry of Internal Affairs went to the place. This was reported by the Ministry of Internal Affairs. According to the operational situation, search, risk and urgent emergency rehabilitation works are continuing as a result of which rescue and other involved forces have erected and evacuated people from different settlements of Lori and Tavush regions. Four bodies were found at the disaster site. Currently, the evacuation of the residents of the Sanahin Station settlement, the drainings of water from the basements of the flooded buildings, as well as the removal of the blocked truck in the Akhbat settlements are being carried out. Let's remind that in order to receive necessary and urgent information, the telephone number 911 of the Rescue Service of the Ministry of Internal Affairs has been announced as a hostel says the message of the Ministry of Internal Affairs. On May 24, 28, a series of events dedicated to the memory of the victims of the genocide of the Greeks took place in the cooperation with the Museum Institute of the Genocide against Armenians and the Union of Greek Communities in Eastern Armenia. On May 24, in the country yard of the Greek community of Alaverdi, a tribute was paid to the memory of the victims of the genocide of Greeks of Pontus. Flowers were bought near the Hachkar, memorizing the victims of the genocide, where the spiritual pastor of the community, Mikhail Shahoyan, conducted a memorial service in memory of the genocide of the Greeks. The event was attended by Narek Bogosan, a researcher, and Temine Martoyan, a senior researcher. And had speeches the head of Alaverdi community, David Humashian, Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of Greece, Christos Sofianopoulos, to Armenia, Maria Lazareva, President of the Union of Greek Communities of Armenia, Representative of the Greek Community, Agmi, and Director of the Greek Medical Center, Helen Met, Simon Zakharov, Senior Researcher, Temine, as well as Martoyan and others. Western Armenia TV continues to say the phenomenon of the already seen. The years of 451, 1920, and 2020, where our correspondent presents our national conflicts. 451, and after 1920, the same seems to have happened with the tripartite declaration of November 9. There is an opinion that it turns out that as of November 10, we could have continued the war and even won, so we were betrayed. Then some will say that's put the dream aside and look at the objective reality. The enemy managed to capture six districts in just six weeks. In other words, we lost one lap every week. How long would it take to lose the remaining four regions? Four weeks. Well, let's say that the weather were to turn bad. Let's say it took eight weeks instead of four weeks. Okay, but then the most astonishing of the events of this war is the following. Azerbaijanis were able to cross 40 kilometers from Hadrut to Shushi on railroads and paths. Narrow valleys where one could set traps and kill the attacking force in mountainous and forest, forest conditions. Despite this, the enemy passed without serious resistance. This means only one thing. Armenian resistance was already broken at the end of October. 
If we look at the huge technical lessons of Darwinian side, one thing become, becomes clear. As of November 9, we could no longer have a serious resistance force in Artsakh. Because if at the beginning of the war, the relationship between our and the enemy's armament by November become worse. Some will say, why didn't they organize the resistance better? Why didn't they bring troops from Armenia? And they will rightly say that this is a very important issue that should be studied in detail and lessons learned. But regardless of whether they didn't send help because of objective reasons, of because of incompetence, probably the later. The fact remains that we couldn't organize resistance. Some will say that this is the objective reality of November 9. Others will ask, but who decided to give the Karvajar Rijar to Baku to the extent that of November 8? The president, Armen Agabrahaman, saw with his own eyes how the entire regime was transferred to Azerbaijan without a single strike, not forgetting the transfer of military equipment worth billions of drums from Artsakh to Azerbaijan by the Artsakh authorities in September 2023. Starting from 2021, official Baku is promoting the idea of so-called Western Azerbaijan under which the Papuku propaganda machine understands the territory of present-day Eastern Armenia. In this way, Baku, without concealing it indirectly and in many cases also directly, begins to show territorial aspiration towards the sovereign territory of Eastern Armenia. Quoting false historical and demographic facts and distorting historical and archival data. In 2022, the so-called Western Azerbaijan community was registered, which is the name of Azerbaijan Refugee Union NGO, which was changed in August 2022. Baku gave this public organization an official position. Ilham Aliyev visited the community office and West Azerbaijan State Television was opened in Baku on May 1. First of all, Yerevan City and Yerevan mosques were targeted by Baku's propaganda machine. The main thesis is that legally the Armenian side deliberately destroyed the Islamic cultural heritage of the city because it is Baku. Many programs and videos have been filmed on this topic in recent years. In this regard, we consider it necessary to mention that there are many publications about the mosques in the city of Yerevan starting from the 19th century. They were described by travelers, including Armenian researchers, valuing their architecture and discourative features. This topic did not escape the Armenian academic thought of the 20th century either. In the works dedicated to Yerevan, the mosque and Islamic structures of the city are naturally presented. Most of Yerevan's Islamic monuments were built in the 17th, 19th century, when the city, like all of Eastern Armenia, was under Persian rule and Yerevan was the center of the Persia. The Islamic population of Yerevan was multi-ethnic. Persian representatives of various Turkic tribes who were mentioned in 19th century documents as Caucasian Tatars lived here. Yerevan mosques are example of Persian religious architecture of the 17th, 19th century. So talking about them as Azerbaijan architecture is nonsense. When Yerevan and all of Eastern Armenia were annexed to the Russian Empire, then the mosques of Yerevan appeared. The first description of their physical condition, all of which have been published. We can state that the evidence of the largest number of simultaneously existing mosques in Yerevan refers to the second half of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century. In the 19th century, in Yerevan, there were mentioned six operating masks according to some data, seven masks. We consider it worth noting that according to the archival data and description of the 19th century, some of the masks were not functioning. There were also those in a state of emergency, which was due to the Russian-Persian war and the reconstruction made by the Russian authorities. As a result of this, the masks on the territory of the Yerevan forces were in a state of emergency and the Yerevan forces belonged to the Russian military authorities. Starting from the first days of the 2020 war, Azerbaijan has dealt repeated blows to the Armenian heritage of Artsakh by violating many UNESCO norms of war and cultural heritage in the occupied territories in case of armed clashes, gross violations of the Hague and Geneva Conventions. They destroyed the unique example of Hachkar art considered a world heritage by UNESCO since 2010, inflicting a blow not only on Artsakh, but also on the entire humanity. UNESCO has not reached in any way to the destruction of the foundation of free churches in Artsakh, including the Green Hour Church of St. Hovannes, the Baptist of Shushi. UNESCO did not respond to the destruction of seven documented and recorded historical cemeteries as well. UNESCO's mission should be implemented in Artsakh immediately to prevent the ongoing cultural genocide. This was all for today. Goodbye. Mi 
Amarek sociopat, este shama na kavor, tu ne im kan chuma inz. Aere ne im lezuna, kolezun hi ma inz inch. Mek sovoro tarupsan, bats merushke depi 